is not a perfect dad or, uh, or perfect mom. I'm not talking about that. We're not talking about looking for excuses. We're talking about real things. I mean, true reality where the other person is really doing damage to the child. And if you love your child, then in my opinion, it's the better thing for you to leave what you have because what you're going to is better. And what you're going to is better is for the safety or protection of the child. Or it may be that you're the one that's being beaten. Or you are the one who is being sexually molested. You say, can that happen in a marriage? Yes, it can. You know, it was just not that many years ago, it was like, a, well, you can't be raped by your spouse. And now we've come full circle on that to going, if you do something to this other person that he or she's resisting and does not want to have happen, and you, and you force them to do it violently or in any other way, yeah, that can still be rape. And if your spouse is doing that to you or during the sexual encounter, doing things to you that makes you feel all this repulsion, not only toward your spouse, but toward you, I mean, making you mentally and emotionally sick because of the fact that you're doing it. In other words, if there are behaviors that your spouse is doing toward you, that is destructive to you, then maybe, maybe what you can have by being away from that spouse is better than what you had by staying with that spouse. Now, only you can make that ultimate decision. I can't. So make it about yourself, make it about your children, or, or you can also make it about your spouse. You say, what? I mean, if what you're doing is allowing him or her to live in such a way that's destructive to your spouse, then it still might be better that by leaving him or her or by ending, I mean, I'm talking about final divorce, by divorcing him or her, you may actually make it better for that spouse. And I don't mean in the sense of, oh, okay, he wants to go, so let's let him be happy, and I'll just divorce him because if he wants to go, I'm going to let him go because that makes him happy. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the fact that he or she is in such destructive behavior that you're accepting them back again and again and again or trying to maintain that relationship with them, even if they're living someplace else where you act like everything is okay. Would it not be better for that spouse? to not be in that relationship with you because in those situations, the relationship with you may actually be aiding and abetting the destructive behavior that your spouse is doing to himself or herself. Now we can get into specifics later when people start calling and say, how do you apply that to this? And how do you apply that to that? But those are the general principles you decide to end a marriage when you finally come to the realization and, and feel confident in your decision that what's next is better than what I have now for my children, for me, or even for my spouse. And again, not just to make your spouse happy, or not just because of the fact that you think it's too much trouble to get into. I mean, it's just taking a whole lot of effort here. Not really that, but in the sense of really what's going on here. And are you being destroyed? Are your children being destroyed? Is your spouse being destroyed? And so sometimes people say, I've been hanging in there for three years, and he or she has never come back. As a matter of fact, the lifestyle seems to be getting worse and worse. How long do I stand? Well, take all the principles I just talked about, and let me add one more to it. When finally, in your own heart, you have the peace that the right thing to do is to end this marriage. If that peace isn't there, then don't. I talked to a lady just the other day, and, and she was telling about her situation, and I was explaining to her, based on what you're saying to me, based on what I'm hearing, it sure sounds like that for the safety of and now in her case, it was emotional safety and for the safety of her and for her child. And even because of the behavior of the husband, I said, you know, for your own sake, you may need to consider this. I'm anti-abortion. I try to save marriages. I never want people to divorce, if at all possible, to avoid that. And she said, yeah, I hear that. I hear what you're asking me to consider. But in my heart, I just don't have peace with that. To which I replied, then don't do it. You need to have peace in your heart. Now, for those of you who are religious, and particularly for those of you who are Christians out there, in Romans chapter 12, there's this thing that talks about how when you become a living sacrifice, that you can test and approve what God's will is. And 
And actually, and I'm not a Greek scholar, even though I took Greek in college, a Koine Greek, that's the Greek in which the New Testament was written. And that was way back in my undergraduate degree. I understand those words to mean uh, try it on and see if it fits. In other words, it's like this. If, if you're thinking, I'm going to go ahead, I can't take this anymore, or my kids can't take it anymore, or it's even making the other person worse, I'm going to pull the plug, I'm going to do what it takes. If you still don't have peace in your heart, then wait. Don't do it yet. Because I think that you'll be second guessing yourself from now on is get to the point where you're just in your heart, you feel peace. This is the right thing to do. Now, sometimes, of course, you fight the divorce and you don't have to make the final decision. I mean, you fight it as long as you can. And ultimately, it finally takes place and you have no choice as to whether it does or not. But if you've heard the principles so far, and I'm not going to talk more about them now until I start taking calls in a few minutes. But if the other spouse is remarried, in my opinion, it's time for you to be free and move on. Or if you come to the realization that what's next is better than what I have now, because what I have now is never going to work. It's causing damage to me and or my children and or to my straying spouse. And then when you finally get from that consideration, that evaluation, and maybe you want to talk to your pastor or your counselor or people who are wise and not prejudiced and finally you know, ask them about it. Here's what I'm thinking. Here's what I'm doing. And I say, don't talk, don't talk to people who are prejudiced. That means avoid the people who love you. Because when they love you, it's very difficult not to be prejudiced against that person who's hurt you. And then when you finally, and if you're a religious person, obviously pray for wisdom, pray for wisdom. And when you finally have peace in your heart, then it's time to do it. It's time to pull the plug. You say, okay, does that mean it's over? Necessarily. You see, Many people know our story, and I divorced Alice. Now, not for a good reason. I divorced Alice for a bad reason. I was abandoning her for another woman that I intended to marry and spend the rest of my life with because of this thing called limerence. And as always the case with limerence, it's an intense, obsessive, possessive emotion. It is a kind of love that feels everything from absolute ecstasy to absolute misery. And it's really characterized by the chemicals that go with it in the sense of causing all that emotional roller coaster and this possessiveness and obsessiveness and, and, and actually what's called a focus illusion. A focus illusion is when I finally am with this person, my life is going to be amazing. That always wears off. And quite often when it does, and it can take up to three to four years, unfortunately. It can happen as short as three months. But when it does, then then that kind of thing is going to go away. And sometimes people will say, but 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 my spouse who is in limerence with this other person, after that limerence is over, after they go through phase three and it finally ends, do you think they can still wind up with a relationship and still live together or maybe marry each other and stay married for the rest of their lives? Is that possible? And the answer is, sure, it's possible. But there's still a great difference in limerence, which is that intense, chemically induced thing happening in the brain, and whatever they're going to have afterwards. Most people, when they get to the end of phase three, actually, if they have left a marriage for an LO, a limerent object, most of them wind up ending that relationship. And that's what happened to me. Where the ones that do marry have a high percentage of divorce likelihood, over 80%, to 18% actually will marry and stay married. Of the ones who did get married, which is a minority of the ones who went through limerence to begin with. Now, I went through the limerence. My lover, after she went through phase three, left me. I tried to get her back. I did not immediately come back to Alice and ask her to take me back because now I had so vilified Alice. I had made her such a bad person in my mind so I could justify leaving her for this other woman that I... <laughs> had done a good job convincing myself of that and didn't want to go back to her. Plus, plus had become quite enamored of the new lifestyle I was living, which involved a lot of liquor and drugs and strip clubs and all kinds of things. Three years after I divorced Alice, I asked her if she would take me back. Everybody she knew advised her against it, but she did. <laughs> and we remarried again and I've been married 29 years this time. So the fact that you are divorced does not necessarily mean it's over forever. Please hear that. There's always a possibility. But 
that leads me to the next thing. Let me talk about this just for a few minutes. So what if it happens? What if your spouse winds up divorcing you, even though you didn't want it and you stood for your marriage? Or, or suppose, suppose you finally, based on the principles we talked about earlier and getting good, wise counsel and mentoring from other people, decide, okay, it is being destructive either to my children, myself, or to my spouse who's straying, and therefore I'm going to do this, and I have reached the point of having peace in my heart, and so, okay, I'm going to divorce. What do you do next? Okay, listen to these things. First of all, don't do anything rapidly. If you move too fast, you're going to wind up in trouble. People will give mental assent to that. And then totally do the different thing. I remember a physician friend of mine years ago, his wife actually died. And the the single mom next door started coming over to have coffee with him just to talk and to listen and to help him through his grief and mourning. And he married her just months after his wife died. I begged him not to. You're making this decision way too fast. You can't possibly know what you really want. I mean, you're reacting off of the pain. Don't do this. Other friends of his warned the same. He told us we were all wrong, that this woman was ideal. He married her. It didn't take long. I mean, just weeks into the new marriage, and he was looking at me saying, what have I done? This is miserable, so don't move too fast. That's the first thing, particularly if you're hurt. You say, well, yeah, but he's been gone three years, and I've been hurting for three years. I mean, isn't that enough? Probably not, because if for those three years you have been striving and fighting to save your marriage, then you really hadn't let go yet. You really haven't gone through the grief process and the healing process, and so please, please hear me. Don't move too fast. At the same time, Don't completely shut the door after the divorce to the spouse. Alice moved on. She finally did start dating. She didn't do it rapidly. I guess she waited about a year after I divorced her. And she began to date finally. And she dated several different guys. And I'll talk about that in a few minutes until finally, finally, she began to date one pretty much all the time. And when I called her back, she reminded me of that. Hey, don't you know, I've already started developing this new relationship. I mean, I'm seeing this guy and it's going pretty well. But at the same time, even though she was doing that, she didn't close the door on me. And so after divorce, I would ask that you still, if you will, without expecting the other person to come back, without living in hope that he or she will come back, that you will leave the door cracked so that if he or she does, you haven't moved on too fast, too strong, where it can't be reconciled. But again, that's your decision. Okay, then what? Sit down with paper. Uh, You can type it if you wish, but actually you'll do a lot better if you write it. There's actually some interesting research out there that, that when you write things with your own hand, that it uses more of your brain. Actually, interestingly, if you're writing longhand, it uses even more. So maybe you get like a diary and you say, what am I going to do with this diary? Start writing down what you have learned from this experience. In other words, I learned this about relationships. I learned this about myself. I learned this about why my marriage went bad. I learned this about the pain that my children went through. You write down everything that you think of. Now, it won't be all in one setting. You might write some today and a little bit tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, and you write and write, and what you're doing is you're processing this whole thing through. You can write about your frustrations, your anger, your pain. You can write about what did work, what didn't work, but you're learning, and you're learning this in a good way because by writing it down, you're actually using more and more of that brain that helps you get more comprehension. And when you have done that long enough that you can see your own flaws, then you decide to change what needs to change about you. In other words, if when your spouse left, he or she said that you were controlling and dominating, change that about you. If your spouse said, I couldn't talk to you with you being a safe place because I never knew who you were going to tell. And therefore I couldn't talk to you about things because I didn't want to hear it from somebody down the street or from the pastor or somebody else who came to me because of the fact that I couldn't trust you with my secrets. If that was the one thing you learned about you, then change. 
If you learn that you really didn't take care of your body in the way that you should, and I don't mean you have to be a supermodel or, you know, an Adonis, but that if you need to take care of your body, then do that. Change. In the